morning, my name is Sierra Rodriguez and this is MNN. There was high drama at UN headquarters in New York last night as the Security Council held an emergency session to consider the quickly escalating crisis over Soviet missiles in Cuba. U.S. Ambassador Adlai Stevenson went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Yomko, Gromko, I'm sorry, in a tense exchange between the two countries with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Chile provided a robust defense of the U.S. quarantine of Cuba, explaining to the Council that the introduction of a nuclear threat to Latin America served no legitimate purpose and only made the world less safe. Romania was also extremely vocal, defending the actions of the Soviet Union as both legal and politically correct, and the right of the Cuban people to defend themselves as they see fit as inviolable. The United States of America, first of all, they wanted to tell us that we can attack, that we stated that we can attack any point uh, from any point in the world uh, in the continental U.S. Yes, this might have been said, but however, what is the reason why did the USSR have to develop uh, military weapons in the form of nuclear weapons? Um, does the date of 1945 ring to anyone, especially to Japan, it might bring a couple of it might hurt a couple of people, especially the ones who were bombed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yes. Um, which country was the one that first started the programs for the nuclear weapons? It was the United States of America, therefore the United States of America is the one that upset this and especially brought us to the brink of extinction for the human race. Your delegates are talking about sovereignty and not having the right to place their nuclear missiles in another soil. Well, if the Republic of Cuba asks for the missiles and agrees upon the ha upon the placement of the nuclear missiles in their soil, it is their right to have them as well. High-level diplomacy was also at hand, 700 kilometers south in Washington, where the Organization of American States deliberated a resolution giving the body support to the quarantine initiated by the United States. The U.S. has said that OAS support is key by sh to showing the communist bloc that the free nations of the Americas stand united on this issue. Latin America was shocked, however, by the sudden decision of the Mexican government to sign a politically, military, and economic alliance with the Soviet Union. The move is unprecedented and totally unexpected, and many are speculating as to whether the Mexican president, Adolfo Mateos, was suffering from some mental illness or even perhaps had been supplanted with a coup d'etat. Soon after the announcement, the United States closed their borders with Mexico, and most, if not all, corporations followed suit by withdrawing direct investment and boycotting Mexican imported goods. Many other Latin American countries followed suit and the Mexican stock market plunged on the news, only further contributing toward what may be a total collapse of the national economy. The legislature was clamoring for answers, and in a dramatic turn of events, the Mateos government was forced to resign only hours ago. The collapse of the country has left many scratching their heads as to why Mexican policymakers would play with the country's economic and political policy so recklessly. All this war between India and China continue to rage over the Himalayas. With so much turmoil around the world, one has to ask, is there any hope for us? Thanks for watching.